You're never gonna make money in an Amazon business if you're just going based off of, oh, this feels good, this is a popular product. Like that's a recipe for disaster. Your feelings don't mean anything. Is selling DVDs on Amazon actually profitable? If you don't have any experience selling media on Amazon, you probably think to yourself, like, DVDs? Like, that's outdated. They're streaming services now. Who would buy a DVD? Who would buy a CD when you could, you know, go on Spotify or, you know, iTunes or whatever, right? Just listen to it for free on YouTube. Like, who buys CDs and DVDs nowadays, right? And the reality is, obviously, CDs and DVDs aren't as popular as they used to be. But there's still, I would say, 1%, 2% of the population who wants a good hard CD and DVD. They want a physical copy. And while, you know, obviously CDs and DVDs aren't super popular anymore, just 1% of the population, that's millions and millions of people. You know, the reality is just in the last couple of years, I've sold probably seven, 8,000 DVDs. I find DVDs to be very profitable. I love buying DVDs from eBay, right? So I buy a lot of my DVDs and CDs and media on eBay and I flip them on Amazon. If you want to check that method out, I have an eBay to Amazon masterclass I put down below. If you want to you know, source DVDs from thrift stores, that's very profitable as well. You can find them for a buck or two. The thing is, there's a lot of competition, but there's tons of DVDs that can make you money on Amazon. You just need to make sure they actually sell. So when it comes to DVDs, and if you're using like a barcode scanner or Scoutly or Scout IQ or the Amazon seller app, there's a couple criteria that I'm looking for with DVDs. Number one, I typically want them to be under 125,000 rank, or if I'm doing eBay to Amazon, I want them to have typically three, four, five, six, sales per month minimum. Now, the monthly sales and the rank isn't as important as I would say the relationship to at least having a couple sales with how many sellers are on the listing because there could be a DVD that only sells three times a month and you might think, oh, that's so slow. It's 125,000 rank. But if there's six merchant sellers on it and only one FBA seller, you know if you jump on that listing and price it competitively, you're going to rotate the buy box. That's how most sales occur on Amazon. It's the buy box. It's that buy it now button. When you're a customer shopping on Amazon and you're looking at a DVD, it says buy it now at that price. How are they determining who's getting the sale? It's the buy box. It rotates. So as long as you know, you have a product that's priced competitively and there's at least a market for that item. I would say three, four, five sales minimum. Although in the last couple of years, I've probably sold five, 600 plus DVDs that maybe had only one sale or two sales over a 30, 60, 90 day period. Now those are called long tail DVDs. And you want to make sure if you go after a product, it doesn't even have to be a DVD that is only selling one or two times a month. You want to make sure the profit is high enough because you're going to pay some extra fees and storage fees and maybe it never sells or maybe it tanks in price, so on and so forth. But I sell a ton of DVDs. Again, even if, and I just made up that number, like 1% of the population buys DVDs. But the reality is Amazon is such a gigantic marketplace. All the data is there for you. Like, don't listen to me. Don't listen to anybody. Use, you know, the, the Keepa Chrome extension to see how many sales there are per month on a product. So if you're thinking about buying a product, look on Keepa and you can actually see all the different price drops. I'll put something on the screen. Every product Keepa will show you how many times it's selling, how often it's sold, what is, you know, the average sales over the last 60, 90, 120 days. There's so much data. Seller Ramp does the same exact thing. If you're scanning with like Scoutly or Scout IQ, these are different barcode apps that you can use. And again, I'll put some stuff on the screen of me scanning books. It tells you how many times there's been a sale, maybe over the last six months, or what's the sales rank, which is an indicator of how, or uh, maybe when's the last time the item sold. So when it comes to products, you have to take your ego out of it. This is the biggest mistake mistake. And I, I could definitely tell this question came from someone who was probably new because when you're new, like I thought the same thing, like who's going to buy this stuff? Like this stuff's vintage, outdated, you know, like there's a, there's a new model. There's the 3.0 model in the store. Now who's going to buy the Sony, you know, item that's 15 years old. People want it. You know, some of these things are nostalgic or they're trying to relive their childhood with certain toys, or some people don't trust technology nowadays because they know it's all outdated outsourced to China and it's junk and it's going to break in a year or two. So the reality is when you're selling, Selling on Amazon, you have to stop thinking, oh, this is something I would want. It doesn't matter what you want. The data will tell you. And all of these tools, Keepa, SellerAmp, Scoutly, Scout IQ, the Amazon Seller App, it gives you data points in terms of how often it's selling or when's the last time it sold or how many sales in the last 30, 60, 90 days. So you take that and the relationship between how many sellers are on the listing and what's your potential profit and how long you think it's going to sell and you make a buying decision. That's what it's all about when it comes to flipping DVDs, CDs 
CDs, books, board games, electronics, tools. I flip all these items on Amazon, but you need to learn how to read the numbers. It's 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 similar to people who, you know, they're trying to save money and make more money and, you know, maybe they want to build their net worth to having 10,000 or 100,000, whatever that is. But it's like, if you're not looking at your money, if you're not reading your credit card statements, if you don't understand, you know, your different debts and how it's pulling away from your money and how your net worth is, like, if you don't know all your numbers, you're never going to be able to grow your net worth. And the same thing applies to Amazon. You're never going to make money in an Amazon business if you're just going based off of, oh, this feels good. This is a popular product. Like that's a recipe for disaster. Your feelings don't mean anything. Read the Keepa charts, read the data on the Amazon seller app, read the data on seller amp, depending on if you're doing online arbitrage or thrifting, so on and so forth. This is a data driven business. Okay. I hate to just throw this down your throat, but the reality is this is a data driven business. The better you get at reading data, Data, interpreting data and making decisions and mitigating your risk based on the market and the data and the number of sellers and the rank and the amount of sales and the buy box percentage, the more money you're going to make. So to make a long winded story come to a conclusion, I love selling DVDs. They are a little bit slower of a seller, but there's literally thousands and thousands of them that I've sold. And a lot of them will sell within a couple days of checking in. Some take a month, some take two months, but uh, I love DVDs. So with that being said, appreciate you guys. Much love and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.